explain that one of the processes I'm working with right now is using transparent and opaque paint. And this is a fairly um, new concept for me in the last three or four years. And I think that it um, makes more luminous glowing paintings. And so I'm going to block in the initial shapes in transparent colors, not using any opaque paint at all. And this these colors will actually be covered, much of it will be covered by other paint, but at the same time, some of that transparent glow will show through. So I'm going to use some of my medium. This is the neomeglic medium, and I'm using that in the initial step. And I'm going to start by blocking in with just the transparent colors, which are on this side of the palette. The opaque colors are over here. And one of the lightest and brightest of the transparent colors is Indian yellow. So I'm going to start by blocking in what I would like to have be one of the lightest, brightest parts of this meadow. And that's going to be this area right through here and right in the front in Indian yellow. So I'm putting the paint on fairly thin several reasons for that. It's um, also possible to wipe it off, should I not like it. And um, uh, adding paint on top of it is much easier. So here's my lightest and brightest part. And then there's a lot of light area down in here. So I'm going to put some of that Indian yellow down in this area here. This initial block in may end up looking a little um, strange as you first look at it because because of using all these transparent colors it has a tendency to look a little garish. And in fact I think I will go ahead and run this light yellow all the way back. I can adjust the colors on that as it goes back in the distance and we'll talk about that further in a few minutes. In this front section here, um, there are actually, it looks like some almost pink flowers happening in here. So I'm going to wipe my brush a little bit. Um, and add some of the permanent rose into this. Coming into some of this front area. And as I look back in here, um, I see some wonderful orangey colors. So I'm actually going to put a little of that permanent rose in here over over some of the Indian yellow. So you can see I'm starting to get some streaks of color happening in here. And I'm going to just bring this all the way down again because again we can we'll be painting right over it. That's just a combination of the Indian rose and the, I mean the Indian yellow and the permanent rose. Now for the trees, which are back in the distance, I'm going to use another transparent color, um, a little bit of sap green. And sap green, this is in the Winsor Newton brand, sap green is very transparent, it's a little acidic. Um, so that it's, it doesn't look like a normal green that we would see in some distant trees. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that in here and let that be adjusted with 
other colors. As, as trees move back in the distance, they usually become a little grayer and a little bluer because of the atmosphere. And so we'll want to we'll want to work on that. Also, you can see in the photograph here that there's there's quite a uh, this is like one section of land, and this is a little further back, and it's quite a bit darker in there. Um, I'm going to use some of the ultramarine blue, also a transparent color, to come in here and define that back area. We'll let these some of these trees be a little higher. And then all along the bottom here, um, I'm going to use some of the ultramarine and uh, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson move, worked into that, and that gives it a nice transparent purple color, which can work along the bottom here and up into some of these trees just to show some of the shadow areas. Also, while I have this ultramarine and alizarin crimson and a little medium, I'm going to go ahead and make the bank of the water. Um, one thing that's important to remember when you're looking out here at water across the marsh, you're not looking down on it like you're in an airplane. So you're not going to be see big swooping turns. You're going to see it getting flatter and smaller as it goes back. And you see the bank of the grass on this side. You don't see that when the grasses are up above the water. So I'm going to come in back here and just define that that's going to be the very back part of um, the water there before it disappears off into the grass. And this is a section. I'm going to add a little bit more red into that. Make that a little bit warmer. That's a section that is jetting out. And then we have this section, which is closer to us. That's definitely going to be wider and probably has some variations in it. Nothing is exactly a straight line out there. Now on this side over here we won't have that bank, but where it juts out will be against the water we'll be able to see it in a few places. Now, the color of the water, I'm actually going to add a little sap green in over here before I go any further. The one thing that I want to try to do with this is cover most of the canvas with this transparent paint. So, And as we start to apply the opaque paint, you'll begin to see why the transparent paint can be important. Music